And uh, on to our next speaker. Everybody's heard of Kenneth Arnold, right? No? No. Mm -hmm. um, the Kenneth Arnold sighting, UFO sighting, was an incident that had happened in June, of, uh, June 24th of 1947. And it's where the private pilot, uh, Kenneth Arnold, claimed he spotted a string of nine shiny, unidentified flying objects flying past Mount Rainier. And then uh, unheard of supersonic speeds that Arnold clocked at a minimum of 1,200 miles an hour. This was the first post-war sighting in the United States that garnered nationwide news coverage and is credited with being the first of the modern era of UFO sightings, including numerous reported sightings over, over the next two to three weeks afterwards. Arnold's description of the objects also led to the press quickly coining the terms flying saucer and flying disc as popular descriptive terms for UFOs. And in Arnold's initial descriptions, he likened their movement to saucers that were skipping on water without comparing their actual shapes to saucers, as news reporters would subsequently quote him. Uh, and at one point, Arnold said that they flew behind a sub-peak of Rainier and uh, briefly disappeared. Paula Harris, um, our wonderful lady who's organized this whole event, is our next speaker. And she's going to be talking about this sighting to you. And as you probably know, uh, Paula Leah Pizzi Harris is an Italo-American photojournalist and an investigative reporter in the field of extraterrestrial-related phenomena research. She is also a widely, uh, widely published freelance writer, especially in Europe. She has studied extraterrestrial-related phenomena since 1979 and is on personal terms with many of the leading researchers in the field. From 1980 to 86, she assisted Dr. J. Allen Hynek with his UFO investigations and has interviewed many top military witnesses concerning their involvement in the government truth embargo. And in 1997, Paula met and interviewed Colonel Philip Corso in Roswell, New Mexico, and became a personal friend and confidant. She was instrumental in having his book, The Day After Roswell, for which she wrote the preface translated into Italian. She returned to Roswell in the summer of 2003 for the American debut of her book of interviews, Connecting the Dots, Making Sense of the UFO Phenomena. She's a key figure in the world of exopolitics, and her second book is entitled Exopolitics, How Does One Speak to a Ball of Light? Exopolitical Challenges and Protocols for Future Contact. Speaks of the orb and light sphere phenomena including the light phenomena seen during STS-75 NASA footage. She's recently completed a textbook in exopolitics, which is called Exopolitics, All the Above. Her latest book, Exopolitics, Stargate to a New Reality, includes some amazing military witness testimony. Please welcome her back to the stage, Paula Harris. And anyway, going back to the original story, what moved me as a, an English teacher in 1979 was the contact piece and close encounters where Francois Truffaut played Jacques Vallée, who was Alan Hynek's, you know, uh, partner in, in research. He uh, had this meeting at the end with these beings and used hand signals to have some kind of contact. And somehow, even though I wasn't interested in it, I became very moved and tears started to flow. So what I decided to do was to meet Dr. J. Allen Hynek and just as the coincidence of my having a red car rental car to come here, uh, what happened to me was that I was invited to a wedding in Evanston, Illinois and decided to go into the center of uh, UFO studies where it was located, where Allen Hynek was, never dreaming he'd be there. I just thought I was going to be looking at files. I walked in there and this very distinguished, wonderful man with a pipe came out with his white hair and he said, my secretary told me that you're Italian. And he said, you, could you do me a favor? Will you work with me and would you translate uh, my Italian cases? And I said, absolutely. And it started a very intense six-year relationship with Ellen and Mimi Hynek his wife, because we went on vacation together and so forth, he came to Boulder, Colorado. 
I knew from day one this is real. So as a journalist, I can't play the game, do you believe in UFOs? It is not religion. It's real. Now, <laughs> it, what did they are, don't ask me. All that UFOs mean are unidentified flying objects. That's all it is. However, uh, with someone of the caliber of astronomer Alan Hynek uh, working with Project Blue Book for the Air Force, with his, and by the way, he had Spielberg on his board at KUFOS. So Spielberg knows something. You don't think they gab while he's doing this movie? Uh, you know, you got to put two into it. My first book's called Connecting the Dots because any intelligent human being that reads the research can put it together. You will never be told by me what to think or what's going on because I have no idea. But you can figure it out. My job is, as Barbara Walters does, just to interview the people and bring them to you before people like Clifford Stone are no longer with us. The ex-defense minister of Canada is no longer with us. And now Colonel Corso is no longer with us. Alan Hynek is no longer with us. If we don't record this, 200 years when this subject matter does come out, we'll have nothing. So this is just my job. That's what I do, the journalistic part of it. So let's talk UFOs. This, is this working? <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, basically, in order to, I used to put on a presentation and invite all the American uh, top-level A-list people I invited and paid for out of my pocket as a teacher, John Mack, Linda Moulton Howe, Richard Dolan, Jesse Marcel Jr. I brought them to Europe. I did the same thing I'm doing here. The Italians thought they were in movie stars. They'd go up and touch Jesse Marcel Jr. and all these people, John Mack, and they th uh, you know, they'd think, oh, wow, we got to meet the real researchers. And so I had a company in Italy that would do that. All my, uh, you know, salary from my teaching went to doing that. And I just started doing that with this conference here in America to, to deal with it. However, I report on the uh, Global Radio Alliance once a month for half an hour, the first Thursday of the month for Race and Royce, who have been so supportive. They understand and they have a passion for disclosure, but most of, all, most of all, that's what they want. They love to hear the truth coming for the original people. So I've already done for them Travis Walton. You, I don't know if we're going to have some archives and the ex-defense minister of Canada for that half hour on Global Radio Alliance. This is the con first conference of a series that I'm thinking about, and, and uh, but this is what shocked me. Is your town there? Those are the 38 towns that are represented in this room from Texas. Cities, counties. Yours isn't there. Wow, we have more than 38? Is Fort Worth there? Okay, do me a favor, and just because I want to record this on the way out, tell one of the ladies if your town isn't there, because I love this idea. This is what this is really about. Now, I'm going to start with this quote. I did not know how much I did not know until I, I found out how much there was to know. That comes from the ex-defense minister of Canada, who has become my very close friend, Paul Hellyer. He read Colonel Philip Corso's book. Is, and I'll tell you, in the United States, it's really a mess because there is so many debunkers trying to deb debunk Colonel Corso's testimony, so you don't hardly get anybody talking about him. Uh, but he called people. He is like, was like McNamara under, under President Kennedy. Paul Hellyer called military people, and you know what they told him? Corso was telling the truth and more, and more. So if he went from there to the idea of the back engineering, the reverse engineering, and he said, well, that's very interesting. I don't think the secret is because of panic. So we'll talk about some of this. 